Hi everyone, Mr. Lee here. Uh, in this video, I'm going to go over how we can combine the conservation of momentum and the conservation of energy into a classic physics problem. All right, so let's get started. So the problem begins with a, a length of string. Okay, we have a length of string here, and uh, we'll call this length of string L. We have a length of string there, and we have a block right there in the middle, and we'll call this wooden block just um, W. Okay. And so that the mass of the block will just be mw. And we have a bullet, a bullet that is fired into this block. So this uh, bullet has a velocity. We'll call it vb for bullet. And this uh, bullet has a mass of b for bullet. Okay. And so as the bullet flies, 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 hits the wooden block, it's going to become lodged into the block. And after it becomes lodged into the block, the, um, the system will rise up into a new height. And so let's see if I could control this properly. So once it becomes lodged in, the wooden block system, it'll rise up. Okay, let's say it rises up to about here. And as you're drawing this, um, be a little bit more meticulous on, the, on that arc, because that arc actually matters a lot. So we have the the block within the or the bullet within the block, and the length of the string is still the same. Oh, totally missed that. Okay, let's see if I could control that string a little bit better. All right, that's the best I can do. So we have the length of the string right there. All right, so this is our initial, and this becomes our final. All right, so here we can approach this in two methods. Um, how I want to approach it at first is the conservation of energy. Okay, the conservation of energy. Um, and I want to do that because the conservation of energy, uh, viewing a problem through the lens of conservation of energy, it actually helps out um, solve a lot of unknown variables. And that's because the energy, uh, the laws of energy, like it governs everything, much like the, uh, the laws of momentum. So if we have this scenario here, this initial scenario where we have a bullet and a block, we can say, you know, we got to ask ourselves, what is the initial energy of the system? And we can say, well, the block, it has zero energy. And that's because it's not moving. And it's, um, we can say that right here along the bottom of the block, we can say that this is height zero. Okay, so it's at its, its height where the H is zero. Um, now, we can also say that the energy of the bullet, okay, it has kinetic energy. So the bullet has kinetic energy and the block has no energy. But after, after, so I will write this for initial, after, so the final, after it gets hit and after it rises up, the block, the wooden block, it has gravitational potential energy. Okay, uh, oops, it's supposed to be you. And the bullet, because the bullet is also in the block, we can say that the bullet also has gravitational potential energy. And the way that we can view it is we can actually view, because we know that the equation for gravitational potential energy is mgh, right, mgh. We can view that the block and the bullet as one combined object. And so we would write it as m, um, mb for bullet plus m. Uh, w for wooden block times the acceleration due to gravity times the height. So we can we can write it like this. And so if we were to come up with a formula, we would say according to the laws of energy that your initial mechanical energy, so me initial is equal to me final, and we can say that the initial mechanical energy was our kinetic energy, is equal to the gravitational potential final. Right? Kinetic energy initial. Then we could break this down even more because we know that it is one half mass of the bullet times the velocity of the bullet squared is equal to uh, mass of the bullet plus mass of the wooden block times the acceleration due to gravity times the final height. Okay, so this becomes our our basis our, for our formula. And from here, we can we can do a lot of different things. Um, if this is our generic formula for this type of problem, um, the problem can ask for, you know, what is the initial velocity of the bullet? So that means that you'll have all of the other information in order to find this one missing information. Or it could ask you, you know, what is the, the height that it goes to? And so we would have all the information except for the, the height, the final height. And then we could approach the problem from there. But this right here, I'm going to highlight it. This is the end equation for this type of scenario. Now, of course, it could change, but you know, this is this is what we have for the scenario that I gave you. Now, the problem gets even deeper here because sometimes um, 
in order to find the height, they don't actually tell you the height. Um, and you'll have to either figure it out through the, uh, through the momentum formula, or you have to do a little bit of extra sleuthing. So sometimes what they do is, I'm gonna get rid of this L right here. Let's, uh, I'll move this length of string to the other side over here. Okay, sometimes what happens is they tell you instead of the actual height that this block rises to, Okay, so instead of actually telling you this height, what they'll do instead is they'll tell you this angle, this angle right there, that angle of deflection. And the reason why they do that is that way you can find the height of um, the, the block. And this is how we'll, we'll do it. So what I'm going to do is, so this is the image. I'm going to draw all over this image, but then I'm going to redraw it so that it looks a little bit cleaner. Okay. All right. So this is what we know. Um, we know that it goes up by a certain angle, and we don't know what that height is. But we do know that this is the length of the string. We do know that this is the angle. We do know that this is also the length of the string. And so that will be our hypotenuse. Okay, so that's important there. This is our hypotenuse. And so what I'm going to do is in red, I'm going to draw over the final, um, the final state of the system so that uh, we can easily identify the triangles that we're looking at here. Okay, so this is our angle. I'm going to draw over here because that's our hypotenuse. Okay, so that's our hypotenuse. And we know that we need to create a right angle. So I'm going to go straight out like so. And then I'm going to finish that triangle. So it looks like that. Okay. And so this will be our right angle. So what this gives us is this gives us this piece right here, um, this vertical piece. Um, let's say I'm just going to call that Y. Okay, so that's going to be your Y, this Y part of that triangle. And the reason why that's important is, I'll do this in blue, is because we need to find the actual height. We'll need to find the actual height that this object rises to. I'm going to use a thinner pen right there. Okay, we need to find this height. And we can say that this height that this block rises up to, oops, let me go back a little bit clean this up a little bit yeah this height that the block actually rises up to is the length of the original string so this length right here minus this um, this Y and so if I were to do the length of the string the length of the original string minus the uh, this new Y part of this triangle I will get the height that the block travels to Okay, and um, like I said before, I'll redraw this to clean this up a little bit better. Um, but the important thing is, is that we can find this Y part of this triangle because we are given both the hypotenuse and the angle. So according to this angle, this Y part of the, the triangle that's adjacent. And so I can rewrite this equation here to say that the height is equal to the length of the string minus um, because it's adjacent, it will be L cosine of theta. And that'll be the height that the block rises up to. Okay, And that will be the height that we can put into our formulas down there. And so let me redraw this real quick so that we can, uh, we can take a look at it without the use of the, the blocks themselves. And I'll try to get a, a ruler here so that I can draw it a bit, a little bit straighter. All right, so we have our initial height let's make this 90 degrees perfect okay so we have the original length of the string um that's one two three okay i'm trying to make this as precise as possible so that's the original length of the string and it's going to rise up the height let's make it let's make it 70 degrees or 60 60 degrees yeah let's do 60 degrees so I went full three increments. Uh -huh. I'll do 45. Okay. Let's see, put it right there. Okay. So we have a total of one, two, three. Okay. So this becomes our, our newfound triangle. 
um, we can say that this is L and this is L. And if I were to create whoops, the risen triangle, we can have this over here and make this flat. So that's triangle after it rises up. So we can draw that right here. Okay, and I'm gonna do this in blue because I think I originally, no, I did it in red originally, I think. All right. right there. Okay, so this is the base of the triangle. That right there is, let's see, how do I get this away here? Go away. All right, so this right here will be our 90 degrees. This right here will be our angle. And this right here is our hypotenuse. Okay, and along here, um, I'll use the ruler. I'll use the straight edge. Zoom in, there we go. Okay, this right here will be our Y. I wonder if the program will let me draw over it. Ah, it does. Okay, so wonderful. So this right here, this vertical part, that's our Y. Um, L was the length of the string. I'm gonna lower that a little bit so that it's a little bit more, more clear. Okay, and uh, this object was down here and it rose up to here. Okay, and we're looking for um, this portion right here that it rose and this is our H. Okay, we're looking for that height, um, that displaced height. And the way we can do this, uh, hopefully this triangle is a little bit cleaner, is that we can see that this L, this initial length of the string, right? Um, it, the initial length of the string is equal to uh, H plus Y, right? So this entire length of the string is equal to the height that it rose plus this this Y from this new triangle that we're gonna that we're gonna draw. And we can rearrange this so that we can get the equation that we came up with up here, uh, which was uh, h, the height, is equal to l minus y, okay? All right, um, and so yeah, so that's how you can find the height that it rises up to if the problem gives you the angle and the angle alone. Now, how does this relate to momentum? Okay, so the way that this relates to momentum, so this is all about energy, and we can actually look at this problem through the lens of momentum. Let's see how we can do that. So the way that we can look at this problem through the lens of momentum is, well, the initial part is the, the same. So let's start off with there, conservation of momentum. Momentum, okay. So we can say that initially we are looking at the, the bullet and the block, so we have the momentum of the bullet plus the momentum of the wooden block. And what we're looking at in the, the final portion um, is right after it collides, after, after the two collide together. And so that'll be um, a inelastic collision. And so it'll be the momentum of the block plus the wood. Right? And so I use the parentheses method just to show you that the two objects are combined. So notice here, I'm not worried or focused about how high up it went. Okay, I'm only focused on immediately after the bullet gets lodged into the block and the bullet and the block system are moving together. And the way that we can view it from here is if we were to come up with the equation, we can say that the mass of the bullet times the velocity of the bullet plus the mass of the wood uh, times the velocity of the wood, which will be zero, is equal to the mass of the block plus the mass of the wood times the final velocity. And this is the velocity that this portion, this block, will start to rise up with. Okay, And the reason why that this is important is we can actually use this idea here and combine it back into the idea of conservation of energy. Because we can say that as soon as the bullet is lodged into the block, the bullet block system has a, um, a kinetic energy. Okay, so see what I do here. So what that means is, so we're looking at back uh, through the view of energy. So now instead of looking at the bullet flying into the block, we're focused just right at the point where the bullet is lodged into the block, okay? And this together is moving. And then together after it moves, it'll rise up to a height of who knows what, um, but that's our current viewpoint. 
So here um, we can say that the mechanical energy initial is equal to the mechanical energy final. And initially we can say that it is the kinetic energy initial will equal to the gravitational uh, potential energy final. And from here, because we're not looking at the block that is flying towards it, okay, we're not looking at that anymore. We're looking at it through the views of the bullet that is lodged into the block. We can write it like this, mass of the bullet plus the mass of the wood times the velocity, velocity initial. And that is how fast the block is going to be moving as it is rising up. It's equal to mb plus nwgh. All right, so, oops, it should be squared, excuse me. All right, so we have this similar scenario here. And the reason why this equation can work, I'm gonna highlight the equation, this new energy equation can work, is because we are able to find the velocity um, as the, the object is, is starting to move. And so I'm gonna connect it using my, my galaxy pen here. This velocity right there becomes this initial velocity over here. Um, the two are linked together. So there's multiple ways of viewing this problem. Um, and uh, I tried to just go about the problem in many different ways so that you can approach it um, based on whatever the problem gives you. But just know that if you utilize both the momentum and the energy method, you should be able to get to the final answer, uh, whether that is the, the height that it is going up to. And so in that case, that will be over here, the heights, or um, you can find the initial velocity of the system and that'll be your VF, all right? So that was a classic physics problem. It's a little bit more intricate uh, than the other videos where we looked at the concepts, um, but this is a way that we can combine concepts into a problem that you will most likely see. I'll see you next time. Bye-bye.